We're here in a forest uh, that's just north of Gatlinburg, Tennessee, in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And what I want to talk about here is uh, this being a good example of an acidic cove forest. And so the soils are formed from parent materials that will result in pHs of 4.5 or below, which limits your composition some. Um, there are also rich cove forests generally characterized by higher pH soils, and you'll get a lot more diversity there. Uh, that being said, though, it's still a very productive forest ecosystem. We're standing at about 1,500 feet elevation, so this is going to be a mid-elevation forest type for mid-slope as well. And you can see as you look around, uh, downhill is this way, uphill is this way, but we're protected on a few sides here by the topography here, which is one thing that makes it a cove. Um, as we look at the composition, this area is dominated by yellow poplar, Liriodendron tulipifera. A lot of these large trees are yellow poplar, and you can see in the southern Appalachians, yellow poplar is an amazing timber species. It grows fast, it grows straight, it gets to huge sizes, and the wood tends to be sold at just a little bit lower value than white oak. Uh, so it's a great timber species. Uh, the seeds are some eras, so it doesn't have a ton of mast value or as much wildlife value, but fantastic timber species. Um, yellow poplar is native, and it does really, really well on these mid-slope positions. Um, so with the history of this particular area, this area would have been logged out before the park was created in the 1930s, and so this is not old growth or even really quite approaching old growth yet. So it would have been logged out as one disturbance. Um, in terms of other disturbances following that, this is an ecosystem where you expect wind to be a major disturbance factor, uh, where wind will knock down trees, that'll create gaps or openings, and that's where you get other species that can then make it into the overstory, like white ash, and uh, hemlock is a big one. Eastern hemlock's a big one here. We can see evidence if you look to the right, my right over there, what you see is a snag that's clearly been burned. Uh, so I'm filming this in June 2020, so we're almost four years after the 2016 fires that burned 10,000 acres in the park, another about 6,000 acres outside of the park. And so there are areas very near here where the fire impact was severe. It completely took out the entire overstory, near complete mortality. But you can see around here, most of the trees are fine. It did get a few of the larger trees. My bet is that particular large tree right there was probably already dead uh, before the fire came in. So because this area is more mesic, uh, the ecosystem just wasn't as conducive to being burned. Um, we're also right here on more of a northward facing slope, north, uh, northeastern facing slope. And so because it's more mesic, the fire's less likely to carry as effectively through here, and you don't get that impact. So this is an ecosystem where you can have some fire impacts, but really wind throw is your primary disturbance. Mode. Now, of course, it can be logged as this stand once was um, as an anthropogenic disturbance. There's another really big anthropogenic disturbance impacting this right now, um, and that's going to be hemlock woolly adelgid. Uh, the park, since 2005, has lost about 80% of their eastern hemlock. Suga canadensis uh, to this introduced aphid uh, that causes pretty significant mortality. Um, so I'm seeing some snags way far over there, you probably can't see them from here, uh, that look like they're still standing dead hemlocks most likely. Um, ash, white ash is a component here and it's very likely that emerald ash borer uh, will knock them way back in abundance if not completely extirpate them in the area at some point in the coming decade. Uh, so you have a number of anthropogenic disturbances here. Uh, but all in all, it's a productive soil for how low the pH is. It's a deep soil. You may find these as colluvial benches where you've had erosion upslope and the material has accumulated here. And so you get a really deep soil and because it's deep, lots of water, lots of nutrients for these trees. Um, in terms of the mid-story, it is a sparser mid-story, but you're seeing some classic mid-story species. We have yellow buckeye right here. So there's a yellow buckeye. Um, I'm standing right amongst uh, striped maple, Acer pensylvanicum. And so, you know, striped maple is only going to get 30 feet tall. Yellow buckeye can be a 100 plus foot tall tree in this region. It can be very large, but it, it also does very well in the mid-story often. So pretty diverse, good timber value, and this is going to be a mid to lower elevation cover type here in the southern Appalachians.